Hey guys, we're on my March 9th DVD update. We're talking about all the DVDs and Blu-rays I've gotten over the last two weeks or so. Now, I wanted to say thank you to everybody for the last DVD update, for giving a thumbs up, you know, liking the video, leaving comments. I thought that was awesome. Definitely leave, you know, comments on this video. Give thumbs up. It's awesome to see all you guys on here talking. I try and get back to everybody. And let me know what you think of my reviews and any recommendations and things like that. And I have some really cool stuff to talk about in this update. The first one from Disney is Wreck-It Ralph, and it's the Ultimate Collector's Edition that has the Blu-ray, the Blu-ray 3D, the DVD, and the digital copy. Now, what I want to say was, I, this is like one that I really liked. It's about a character named Ralph, Wreck-It Ralph, who's in a video game kind of like Donkey Kong, the original Donkey Kong, and he's the villain of the game, and he's tired of being the villain. He really is a very nice guy and really is tired of this. So he ends up, you know, the people in the game with him don't like him because they're kind of afraid of him and he kind of leaps, like, sleeps out in the garbage and, you know, it's just basically him leaving the game, trying to find a game where he can be the hero. He ends up going into a game kind of like Call of Duty or uh, kind of an alien game. He ends up going in there and messing things up and letting the aliens out into the, you know, the game world and he ends up going into a game kind of like uh, Mario Kart which is like a race car game where he ends up you know mixed with like um, Candyland and he ends up going there and meeting this character voiced by Sarah Silverman and she's kind of the outcast of where she lives and it's him you know becoming friends with her and you know she's the glitch in the game so no one really likes her and she's the outcast so it's the kind of thing about their friendship but at the same time the alien kind of thing that he let out into the uh, other game is coming starting to take over and destroying the game so it's them trying to figure out how to save the kind of candy land this is just a really fun movie looks really good in 3d really like this one a lot it's got a lot of features on here it has a commentary deleted scenes um, just really love this one I thought this was a you know for somebody like me who really loved you know, as a kid going to arcades, I used to always play the Simpsons game. It was one of my favorite ones to play. I remember going to um, this one camp, and I didn't even really like the camp, but I liked they had an elective, which was um, arcade, and they had all these old arcade games. I used to always go down there and play the Simpsons game, and just, I don't know, just to me, this was just a really fun game, and this a fun movie. And it's not the kind of movie, too, where it's only for kids. I think a lot of adults will really like this one, especially if you liked video games and arcade games and things like like that. The next one, and this is a like a favorite of mine. I have watched this movie since it was brand new. You know, it, it kind of makes me feel old that it's 25 years old now, and I'm pretty sure that I saw this in theaters at about, you know, I, I think I did. If not, I saw it on video. I remember watching it when it was new, and it was Roger Rabbit. This is the 25th anniversary Blu-ray edition. This is just a, like such a cool movie. It's all done you know, and they didn't do too many movies like this where they put animated characters into live action. The only other movie that I really can think of that did that was Cool World and then that weird, not really bad movie, Evil Tunes, I think. You know, it was okay, but those are the only ones I can really think of that they did actual animation. Rocky and Bullwinkle was like a CGI thing. But this movie's about, you know, the character Roger Rabbit and his wife is, you know, kind of... I might be seeing someone else, and um, the head of the studios that you know that Roger Rabbit works for. Because in this movie, the tunes are you know real, live in the real world with people, and they're you know, and, and I don't know. I just I like the way they did that. And the um, Bob Hoskins character is a private investigator that is hired to follow Jessica Rabbit, Robert Ra Roger Rabbit's wife, to take pictures and see what she's up to. And basically, he ends up discovering that she is seeing someone else. And the next day, the person that, you know, she was seeing is found dead. And Roger Rabbit is the suspect. So it's kind of him hiding out with, you know, Eddie, played by Bob Hoskin, the private investigator. And, you know... You know, the you know classic lines are, Hide me, Eddie! Hide me! I know, this is just a, a favorite movie of mine. Um, Christopher Lloyd is a great villain in this movie. And at the end, I always love what happens. I'm not going to talk about what happens. But this is just a movie that I have always loved. Really well done movie. You know, with all these cool, crazy characters in it. I don't know, I just absolutely, this is a must-see if you haven't seen this one. And it's got a whole bunch of features on it. And I believe they're all on the old... 
um, DVD, but it has the Roger Rabbit shorts, and the shorts were on in the beginning of some movies. I think one of them was on, like, a Honey, I Shrunk the Kids movie or something. I might be totally wrong about this, but I feel like one of them was on something like that. But it has the shorts, it has a commentary, you know, and then it shows, too, one thing that was pretty, pretty cool, showing how they had stand-ins for the characters, which were these kind of, like, um, sort of stuffed animal rubber versions of the characters that they would hold to kind of show how they got the shots and everything. But this is a great one. The next one from Fox is the remake of Red Dawn. Now, I have never seen the original, the original one, as far as I can remember, but this is about, um, in North Korea comes and basically takes over this town, and it's about the people in the town, and it's placed basically Chris Hemsworth and his brother, played by um, Josh Peck, uh, kind of hiding out and trying to defend this town. It's them and a group of people trying to, you know, they're basically just hiding away. Uh, Chris Hemsworth was in the army, and, you know, he kind of has the skills for this. Josh Peck is his brother, and, you know, Josh Peck, I, I really have been a fan of him for a long time, especially movies like Mean Creek and Spun and things like that. But this is just a cool movie. I, I really liked it. I mean, you know, it's one of those kind of movies where, I kind of wish it was rated R because you could you know, see there would have been a lot more that they could have done if it was rated R. But it's basically this town and you know these group of these people coming together to try and take down the North Korean force and kind of taking, over, you know, taking back their small town. And um, that's the main concept of it. But I, I really enjoyed this. I thought it was pretty good for what it was and thought, I just thought it was a fun movie. And the next one I got from Universal is This Is 40. And this has the unrated version and the theatrical version of the film. This movie is a follow-up to Knocked Up. It doesn't follow around Seth Rogen's character or Katherine Heigl's character. This is um, Leslie Mann and Paul Rudd's character from the film Knocked Up. This is basically, Leslie Mann's character is, you know, approaching 40. She's having her 40th you know, birthday, and she's kind of become very upset about it, and, you know, kind of looking at her life, and just not very happy about what's going on, and there's all kinds of problems going on in the in the house, Paul Rudd, who has this record label, you know, he's trying to get it really going, because, you know, he worked with a big company, now he's on his own, and the person that he signed, you know, it's not going so well. So it's all about their family and kind of all the problems that they're having that are going on. This is, a, you know, compared to Knocked Up and some of the other ones, this one is way a little bit more of a downer film. And it's way more, you know, realistic to real life and all kinds of problems that are going on. And, you know, you know with, Kat, with um, Leslie Mann's father not seeing him, played by John Lithgow. He was very good. Albert Brooks was great in this movie. Really glad to see Albert Brooks in a lot more movies. But this has, you know, the making of, deleted scenes, alternate scenes, gag reel, and it always has um, line-o-rama, which is really pretty cool. It shows, like, the alternate lines that they've used. But I enjoyed this one. It was a, you know... I know it's had some mixed reviews, but I, I really thought this was a pretty good one. I like the friend character of um, Paul Rudd, and he's, you know, the actual, the voice of Triumph, the initial comic dog, which, you know, and there's actually online I found a video of him doing that character going around the set. This is a really good one. You know, if you like Knocked Up and you like his other films, I'd like this. I, I kind of wish, though, that there was a little bit like a cameo during one of the party scenes with um, Seth Rogen. I thought that would have been kind of cool. The next one I got from the Criterion Collection, this is a movie that I have watched ever since I was a kid, have always loved this one, and it's The Blob. Now, I will say, though, the theme song to this will get stuck in your head in a way you can't escape. It's like, here, beware of the blob, it squiggles around everywhere, and, you know, it, it's just this crazy theme song. The, the vocals kind of remind me of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, the songs, but this movie is about, you know, the first movie, I think it was one of his earliest movies with um, Steve McQueen. And, you know, it's it's kind of, you know, it's not like a perfect movie. It's one of those kind of movies that's like a cheesy science fiction film about a couple that are out, you know, on like Lookout Point, you know, where everyone goes to make out. They see a shooting star in the sky, and it ends up being something from space. And there's an old man out that finds this meteorite, touches it, gets on his hand, and it's this blob stuff that's kind of growing and eating his hand. 
and you know the Steamer Queen's character and his girlfriend end up going out there finding the guy, seeing what's on his hand, taking him to the doctors, and you know they just basically ends up spreading, eating the guy, and the blob is loose in the town, kills the doctor, and the movie is Steve McQueen's character and his girlfriend going to the police, trying to tell them what's happened. They're not believing him, and you know I love too how many movies have like you know done kind of takeoffs on this. You know Killer Clowns is a lot like the same kind of concept as this. I also like the remake they did of this. It was like this, but done really gory. But I really do like the cheesy effects in this. These, you know, I don't know what it, I think it was, it was silicone or something they used for the blob. And these real small little miniature sets and stuff. It's just a really fun, you know, B film that I really, like I said, I have loved this movie for a long time. And with these kind of movies, it's always kind of hit and miss. This one really works. Like, I really have a fun time watching this, even after seeing this so many times as a kid. The next one I got from Warner Brothers, this is Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey, which is the first part of the Hobbit trilogy, which I really enjoyed this. I actually, you know, with the Lord of the Rings films, I liked them. There are movies that I have watched a ton. This one I really enjoyed. It's about, um, it's basically a prequel to the Lord of the Rings films. It opens with, you know, um, Frodo's, I somehow I don't mix up the names, but Eliza Wood's character's father, who's writing kind of like a memoir of his life about, you know, the journey that he went on. And it was basically the journey where Gandalf came to him and, need you know, and the dwarfs came to him and needed help going on the journey to try and get back their, um, you know, castle that was taken over by the dragon, giant dragon. So it's the movie is them all going on this journey. And, you know, of course it's all the first part, so it doesn't, you know, continue, you don't know how it goes and everything. I used to watch the original Hobbit a lot in school, I remember seeing it a lot. I used to watch it a lot because it was kind of that kind of classic animated like film. I, I don't know. I really enjoyed this. I thought that, um, like, I was really glad, too, that the Gollum character was in this again. I really liked that character. You know, and, you know, Andy S Serkis, did, you know, does the voice and the motion capture of it. And that is such a strong character. Like, I would go down as one of my favorite characters in film history. There's something about that character. It's just so weird and creepy. And I don't know. And this one, too, you know, is amazing, you know, practical effects too when the the locations that they've used you know shooting in you know i think it's the netherlands um i think so I'm, I, sometimes i mix this stuff up but i really love the locations really well done movie really looking forward to seeing the next parts of this but this is definitely one i would recommend then oh yeah it also has a whole it has two hours worth of video blogs on here which is very cool all about the making of and you know early production the premiere very cool features on this the next one and this is one I was really lucky enough to order before it ended up selling out it sold out in like five hours or something and it's John Carpenter's Christine and this is the Twilight Time edition of course this is already on eBay now you know three times the price of what it was but this is a you know really cool killer car movie about this car that's possessed and killing everyone. I've always really liked this one. I missed getting uh, Night of the Living Dead, the Twilight Time, but a lot of people don't like the transfer on that because they did some kind of weird blue thing to it. Also, Miss Fright Night when it first came out, like in 2011, on this edition. I didn't know then how like limited these things were, and I remember seeing it for like forty dollars, and I'm like, oh, I don't want to pay that. So it seems a little high, and then I like regretted it, and now it's like two hundred fifty dollars. I'm like, why didn't I not buy that then? But you know, if you can find this, you know, but I, it's, I think right now it's really hard to find and so overpriced on eBay. But this is, I was just really happy to get this. It's a limited edition of three thousand copies. The next one, I just finished watching this, and it's from Magnolia, and it's Storage 24. I've been looking forward to watching this for a really long time. Really love movies that are in, like, one setting. And um, Storage Center was a really cool center, cool, cool setting for this. It's all basically like, you know, Storage Wars, where they go, those inside settings. I thought it would have been kind of cool if they got a cameo. Because there was one character that left in the beginning, like right away, of somebody from Storage Wars. It was kind of like maybe he was in the UK doing, like, looking at storage loggers. I just thought it would kind of weird and funny to get somebody from that. You know, I, I don't know. I was just kind of hoping they would do that. I know they I knew they wouldn't, but it would be really cool and, like, you know, secretly inspiring. 
But the movie is about this airplane that crashed outside of a storage center, and it's about a people who are inside. Uh, one guy's going with his friend to basically go there and get everything out of the storage locker because him and his girlfriend broke up, and he's very depressed about it. But his friend's going along with him to help him get stuff out. But like I said, there was a crash outside, and something has gotten loose. This creature has gotten loose. And the they end up getting there to the storage center, and everyone ends up getting locked in there. So it's the two friends, the girlfriend, her friend, and another friend, all in there with this creature. And, you know, it's them trying to survive in there with this thing, trying to find a way out, crawling around in the vents in the place. There's a real cool stuff with them, um, you know, in this one guy who actually lives in the storage center. And it's just a really cool, well-done creature film. And the effects with the creature were great. Like, there was some stuff with it when it was, like, run, you know, when people were running through the storage center, they were just kind of running above them in, like, the rafters and, like, kind of just the way they were doing it. Really cool cool practical effects very creepy the trailer to this kind of i don't think the trailer to this movie or the one i saw did it justice it kind of made it look like it was kind of like trying to be like alien they even kind of cut it like that and i saw some negativity on that don't look at that trailer i really love this this is one i really hope to see a follow-up to this just i just really really like this one the next one i picked up and you saw me getting this in the um, DVD shopping video, DVD Tuesday video, is Westworld. This is a really fun 70s film about, a like, when, you know, if you have a lot of money, people can go to these lands that are all robotic, you know, kind of like, you know, the Hall of Presence in Disney and the, some of the Disney rides, but these things are super advanced, and you can, you know, go to, like, Greek World, um, medieval world or West world, and these two friends end up going to West world where they can pay a thousand dollars a day and like live the old West settings. They're sleeping with the robots, and you know they can kill the robots. You know, like getting a draw with them, and it's all it's real advanced. Like they have real guns, but the guns will only fire on robots. They won't fire on human beings because you kind of wonder like how how do they not make sure they don't kill just some random person who's paying the money to be there too? But in this um, world, there's things are malfunctioning, things are going wrong with these robots, little by little, things are going strange, you know, behind the scenes, a snake bit somebody, you know, things that were not supposed to happen, because people are never supposed to be injured in this world, so things start to go wrong, and things turn, get very bad, and it's about people trying to get out, and I, I really enjoyed this one, it was a fun 70s film, really liked these kind of things. And the next one from Shout Factory is the follow-up to Westworld called Future World. And this is, I think, like three or four years after Westworld has, you know, been closed because of all the things that have happened there. You know, people, you know, all the accidents and things like that. They have just opened the place back up. It's only been open a week. And they've invited press people to come there and, you know, go there and basically write things about it. Um, it stars Peter Fonda and... Um, Blaine, Blaine Danner, I don't know how you say her name, but she's from the Meet the Parents films. And, you know, Peter Fonda, on the way to going to this place, ends up running into somebody that's like, Delos, and he gets killed. Something has happened to him. So he's kind of wondering what's going on there. So he's also the person who wrote the article about Westworld and all the bad things that have happened to it. But, you know, him, he basically goes there with all these leaders and, you know, press people and things like that to, you know, go see the new future world where they have future world and a number of other worlds. And when he's there, you know, things seem very strange. It has a real kind of Stafford Wives vibe to it there. You know, the movie has that vibe, too, mixed with, like, Halloween, you know, kind of, I think, took a little from this, like, the look and things like that. But when he's there, there's things are strange, and it's him try, trying to go on his own investigation and figuring out what is going on in this place. And it's very cool. I, I, I really I really love these kind of movies. And um, the one character, too, the gunslinger character who was in the first Westworld is in this. There's some crazy, like, trippy dream sequences in this. This is just a really cool one. The next one I got from the Scream Factory line from Shout Factory is Phantasm 2. This is the follow-up to the first Phantasm. Now, this one was made with a bigger studio. So there's a documentary on here which is pretty interesting talking about how they went through problems with... Because the one actor who played the main kid... They didn't have him in it because the studio wanted a, like a like a new working Hollywood actor. Even Reggie Bannister had to audition to play pretty much himself. 
they were trying to like they think they wanted I can't remember who they said they wanted. They wanted like the guy um Jeffrey Tambor to play him, which would have been really weird to see that. Um this is the follow up to it, which takes place I think it's like ten years after the first one, and it's Reggie Bannister's character and the kid trying to track down and kill the tall man character. This is just a really cool movie. The one thing that I um I will say though is I feel like none of the Phantasm films were ever as cool though as the first one. There's something about the first one which was so creepy. The music in it was so good. They always kind of changed the music a little bit. It was like the same, but just like, it just wasn't as cool in all the sequels. But I do enjoy this one. Uh, you know, I really am a fan of Reggie Bannister. Reggie Bannister is very cool in this. But this is a really pretty cool one. Definitely check this out. It's got like a commentary on here, new interviews, the documentary. But, you know, if you like the Phantasm films, this is definitely one to watch. Now this one, I, I have never heard of this and really love this. And it's from Shout Factory as well, and it's Time Rider. And it's from direct, It's directed by William Deere, and who's the director of Harry and the Hendersons, which is like one of my favorite films. And this is about Fred Ward. Fred Ward is the main guy in this. Um, Fred Ward was from... Um, it's funny how it says in the back, and Fred Ward. But it was Fred Ward, you know, is the star of this. Fred Ward was in, like, uh, Road Trip as the Father. And tons of movies. But I always think of him in Road Trip, though. But this is about, he's a BMX, you know, motocross racer. He's out in the desert, like, kind of on in the middle of, like, a sort of like a race. I couldn't tell if it was a race or he was sort of training for it. But he ends up going out into the desert, getting lost, ends up stumbling into this um, experiment going on. It's a time machine experiment. He ends up going and going in the middle of the time machine experiment when they set it off, gets sent back to like 1865. So it's him on this motorcycle in the 1860s. This is almost like the pre-Back to the Future 3. It has that kind of vibe, you know, with him there in these clothes with the motorcycle. Everybody's like kind of scared of him. There's a group of these outlaws that won his bike. And I also will say the music in this, especially like the synth music in like the er, the beginning of it, is so cool. Like this really good synth music, like some of the best. And it's him there, you know, he ends up meeting this girl. And it's everybody's just pretty much obsessed with this motorcycle and scared of it. And it's them trying to get it from him. And Fred Ward's character trying to get back to the current times. Really love this one. This is like one that I'm so glad I saw. Like just really, definitely check this out. It's just such a fun movie. The next one from Anchor Bay is The Master. I will say I'm kind of surprised that Philip um, Seymour Hoffman didn't get the Academy Award. I really, though, did like Daniel Day-Lewis as Lincoln. But I, I, there's something about the, the level that Joaquin Phoenix took it in this. And I guess in some ways it's almost like he took it to craziness. And maybe that's why he didn't win, because it was just like so crazy. And it's this movie about, he was in, it's kind of played out in these different kind of places, so you don't really know when certain things take place. But he's got a, uh, Joaquin Phoenix is in the Navy, has this major alcoholic problem, and he's like drinking like, like the liquid from bombs and photochemicals. A lot of people didn't pick up on all that, all the things that he was drinking, and he's had like, you know, he accidentally poisons somebody when he's out at the war. And it's him, you know, the, the my favorite stuff was in the photo when he was like a photographer. But then he ends up meeting Philip Seymour Hoffman's character, who's kind of like, almost like a cult, runs this kind of cult of these people that believes, oh, there's all these crazy things. And he takes Philip, um, he takes Joaquin Phoenix under his wing and it's trying to like like enlighten him and make him see what he sees and like all these crazy tasks that he's putting him through and these crazy things going on. But it's really a difficult movie to explain. I really like this though. I thought this was a good one. Was actually surprised that it didn't you know get nominated for an Academy Award, the movie itself, and surprised the director, Paul Thomas Anderson, didn't get nominated as well. The next one from Anchor Bay as well is Border Run with Sharon Stone and Billy Zane. This one was okay. This is basically about um, Sharon Stone is like a reporter. Um, I kind of had a hard time following some of this. But Billy Zane, you know, takes people kind of across the border. And he ends up getting captured. And Sharon Stone goes to Mexico to try and find him. And it's basically her going through all these things to try and get him back. And there's some weird stuff in this, like, 
I don't know. I, I, I didn't absolutely love this one very much. I thought it was okay. You know, I, I've been a fan of Billy Zane for a while. Um, you know, Titanic, but like really liked him in the Tales from the Crypt movie. But this is just I kind of really, like I said, kind of weird to explain. The next one from Sony is um, Rust and Bone. This was really good. This was, like, I, I saw the trailer for this a long time ago and really wanted to see this. Some great shots of, like, you know, Shamu, killer whales and stuff in the trailer. I was like, whoa. But there's a woman who is a, you know, a trainer at, you know, kind of like a SeaWorld place in France. And something happens. There's, like, an accident, and she ends up losing her legs. And it's, you know, earlier on she met this guy at the bar... And it's this guy who's, like, living in, you know, having all kinds of little problems going on in his life. He was a fighter, and he's living with his son now. And but this guy met her at the bar weeks before, and there, she got into a fight, and he t ended up taking her home. And he ended up getting her number, or I think giving her his number and saying, call me if you ever have any problems. Well, after her accident, she lost her legs. He ends up she ends up calling him because she doesn't know who to call. So it's about kind of her, you know, him taking care of her, kind of trying to get her to leave her house. And at the same time, they sort of have a like kind of a relationship and he starts getting into these like brutal fights for money. And, but the, I will say too, the, the coolest aspect of this was the effects on, you know, her legs missing. It was so well done. The actress was from the dark Knight rises. It was just this, it was kind of done the same way they did, you know, Lieutenant Dan in, you know, Forrest Gump, but just really well done. They have a feature on here, too, which shows, you know, how they did it, you know, the before and after, which is very cool. But this was just a really well done character piece. And the next one I ended up importing from Amazon UK, and it's American Mary. And I don't I know when it's coming out in America, but this is a region-free copy. So if you, you know, so anybody can play this Blu-ray. It wasn't that expensive. Like I think it was like twenty dollars with all the shipping and everything. Really like this one. It stars, um, you know, Catherine Isabel, who is from the Ginger Snap films, and she was also in um, Freddy vs. Jason and a number of other things. But she's this medical student, and um, it's it's all about like these underground um, surgeries, and she ends up going. To, she needs to get some extra money. So she ends up going to this strip club, thinking she's going to do stripping. And when she's there, you know, she, someone there is like some kind of... You never know some of what's going on. But there's some kind of a surgery. Someone has been injured or something. You don't know what's going on. But she ends up having to do something. And by doing that, they, you know, because they knew she was, uh, you know, in medical school, she ends up getting calls from, like, random people and this woman who wants to be like a Barbie and these, so just these crazy surgeries and stuff. She ends up basically doing these things, and there's some number of things that, have, like, something, you know, really bad happens to her, and then what she ends up doing to that person. This is just a really crazy, like, you know, well-done, creepy movie about, you know, I, I don't know, I just, very hard to explain, but... You know, and not as gross as you would think. You know, it was it kind of holds back, which I liked. It didn't take it to like crazy levels with what it did. I thought what they showed really worked. But I really enjoyed this one. If you like Catherine Isabel, definitely recommend this. This is definitely, I would say, next to the Ginger Snap films, her best movie. The next one from Lionsgate. This is one a lot of people have been asking me about. And this is The Bay. And I, I, you know, this is from Barry um, Levinson. You know, this is so different from everything, anything he's ever done. Because, you know, I know him from, you know, Toys and um, some, some movies with Robin Williams and, like, the political films and things like that. This movie is all about a kind of a, something going on in the Bay. There's something, infection thing going on. And... And the cover-up that happened. It, start, it starts with this woman talking into like a webcam, saying, oh, what happened this day? And all the footage that from that day was confiscated by the government, or some group has all the footage from everybody's cameras and you know, cell phones and things like that of what happened in this you know, small town on the bay. And, you know, basically something is going on with the water and anybody that's drinking this water, you know, starts to like have these like blisters and these, ew, and they're like coughing up blood and it's real crazy stuff going on. I really enjoyed it. But like I said, it's, you know, I don't want to ruin it, what's, what, what it is, but it's just like 
way different than you'd ever think. And for a found footage film, it was different because it was taking from so many different elements, people out in the water having it happen to them, things going on in the water, people who were scuba divers, you know, the scientists. And I don't know, and my favorite was this one woman, like, going, help me! And it was like coughing up blood. It was like, oh, and like, you remember this woman. Because it was kind of over the top and like, I don't know, I liked it. This is just a cr really crazy found footage movie. The next one, now, I, hope, I don't know if I can say this right. Cordonero, Dawn of the Demon. This is a film that Robert Rodriguez produced and wrote. And it, and it was from 2005, and it's finally come out in um, the U.S., and it was never out before. And it's about this guy who was kind of like a cleanser. You know, his father was would go in and kind of cleanse the evil spirits and places like that. So he ends up, you know, kind of taking over for his father. And there's this gang... This, this this drug gang that are basically Satanists that are like killing people and all these crazy things going on with these people. Cordonero, I think that's how you say it. But he ends up working with the cops, trying to you know cleansing the locations and trying to track down the the head of this drug gang. There's this one guy who kind of looked like Doctor Moreau in it. You know, I kept thinking about that scene with the Doctor Moreau looking kind of guy. But this is a the the coolest aspect of this movie is the kind of like flashback scenes he would see or these split like quick images of these like demons and blood and like it's real gory that's a, the strongest aspect of this movie I really did enjoy that stuff not like the all-time greatest movie or anything but for those kind of things it was it was different it was a very different movie and it kind of it was funny I, I could tell it was a 2005 film because something about it just had that a little bit of an older feel of the kind of movies they were making during, during that time the next one from image is no one gets out alive now I will say if you're hoping to if you're watching this for Clint Howard you know, because it says, end Clint Howard. Don't buy this for Clint Howard. Clint Howard is in the beginning of this movie for a minute. And, you know, I, and I kept on thinking, why didn't they have Clint Howard be the killer? They could have probably found a way to film it in, like, three days. I'm guessing it was almost like Clint Howard was there for a convention. And they had him do it, like, in, like, two hours. But this is a movie about, um... It's about people going into this, you know, it opens up with this. Now, the thing about it, too, was so weird was the girl in the beginning is playing hopscotch in the middle of the road and gets killed by this drunk driver. But I'm thinking, why is she playing hopscotch in the middle of the road? Like, she's in the road playing hopscotch. It's not like a private driveway. It's the road. So she ends up getting killed, and the father is, like, real pissed about this. And ends up, you know, anybody that comes to this area where he lives, he's killing them. So it's about a group of these kids that are camping out there, getting killed one by one with this guy. They were like the one scene I really liked in this was at like a general store. This one was okay, but just the idea of like him going so crazy over this and the girl shouldn't have been in the road like that was kind of bothering me. But I, I enjoyed it. Like the cover is a little bit cooler than the movie, though I will admit. Now this one I, I watched last night really liked this. It's called The First Time. And it's about, um, you know, like a coming-of-age romantic film. You know, I tend to like these things a lot. And, it, you know, it, it stars... Um, well, the one girl I recognized in this was from um, Fun Size, which I, I really like that Fun Size movie. But this is about a guy who is at a party. He's going outside. You know, he's this girl that he really likes. And she only really sees him as a friend and really is, doesn't really seem to care too much about going out with him. But he's outside in, in the alleyway, ends up meeting this girl who's at the party as well, and they kind of start talking and hanging out that night, going back to the, you know, her house, just sort of talking, kind of doesn't go anywhere from there, you know, anything big from it. He ends up, you know, not getting her number because the parents are coming home, so he has to go out the window. And it's about kind of these two people that are kind of in situations where, the you know, the, the guy likes this girl, the girlfriend has this boyfriend who's sort of a real loser kind of guy and really kind of weird. And it's about them like, kind of starting to really like each other, yet they have these kind of obstacles and they kind of have to get over. And I don't know, it's just a really good coming-of-age movie. And it was one of the better ones of these I've seen in a long time. It has like a vibe of like a 90s movie, I thought. And the next one from Sony is A Dark Truth. Now, this one is another one that's very difficult to explain. But... It's about, like, in Ecuador, there's something polluted the water. And all these people have gotten sick and are dying from it. You know, the kind of cops are killing off people there to kind of get rid of it. And it all has to do with this water corporation. And 
the water corporation is in the middle of this big deal, you know, and they end up sending, you know, they're trying to do anything they can to cover this up. So it's about Andrew, Andrew Garcia's character who's sent there to try and get the truth behind it because the one woman who works at the the fact that the water corporation, you know, it doesn't like you know know something's going on. The people there above her are trying to cover this up. So it's her and sending Andrew Garcia's character to try and gather the facts of what's going on. It's a you know a pretty good cover up movie. Didn't absolutely love this or anything, but like I said, it was just kind of confusing. Sometimes these kind of movies to me are kind of hit and miss. It wasn't necessarily that it was bad or anything. I just didn't like it. I was kind of like not that intrigued by it. The next one. I got from E1 is Eaters. This is a zombie movie from Italy, and it has a kind of a vibe of like Day of the Dead because it was kind of like the one guy. It's about like these survival survivors, and the one doctor is kind of like a young version of the doctor in Day of the Dead. He's trying to do experiments and like experimenting on the the you know zombies and trying to find out what you know cure and find out what's going on. And the one guy is kind of like a turd, just like Captain Rhodes. It's all about them trying to find a cure to this thing. But it was a very well done zombie movie. And there aren't too many movies that I've seen, like horror movies from Italy, that come out in the States too much anymore. And the last one I got from Warner Brothers is Tom and Jerry, 30 Hilarious Cartoons, Pint Size Pals. Which is, you know, if you like, you know, pretty much everybody knows Tom and Jerry. These are all theatrical shorts, very fun ones. These are more of like the ones that are safe for kids and things like that. But I, I always have loved the Tom and Jerry, you know, cartoons. They're very fun. I always think of, too, when I think of Tom and Jerry, I think of The Simpsons, you know, Itchy and Scratchy, which were based off of them. And I always, always as a kid, to always watch the Tom and Jerry movie. But anyway, though, that's all for this update. Thanks again for everyone for watching, for subscribing. Thanks to everybody for giving a thumbs up on the last one, and definitely thumbs up this video. Leave comments. I look forward to hearing what you guys think. This one, I figure, is probably end up being pretty long. So thanks for watching and sticking it to the end, and I'll see you guys later.